Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. A viewer asked me uh, some questions, a whole sequence of questions actually, and I think he's a young man and is only familiar with the new and indirect way of getting radio teletype frequency shift keying which is called audio frequency shift keying because audio tones are input into a single sideband transmitter. The way that that works, suppose that your carrier, suppressed carrier frequency is 14.07 Zero 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 megahertz, or a hundred and well, whatever. Uh, this is the last digit represents a one hertz difference. You make it into a one here, and it would mean one hertz higher in frequency. Uh, so, but let's suppose that you're right on fourteen point oh seven zero 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 megahertz. That is your upper side band suppressed carrier frequency single side band in upper side band mode then suppose that you apply pure tones pure audio uh, tones to the input of that single side band transmitter and no noise no nothing else just these pure tones they will come out uh, if the frequencies are 2125 hertz and 2229 uh, 2295 hertz then you will get these frequencies which is represents a difference of 170 hertz and using the proper uh, radio teletype signal generating equipment you can get radio teletype frequency shift keying, the exact equivalent of frequency shift keying, but it's called audio frequency shift keying because audio tones are used to derive these two uh, intermittent signals. But they're exactly like carrier waves. If they were steady audio tones at steady frequencies, they would be pure unmodulated carriers the exact equivalent is if there were nothing more than a key down CW signal here and a key down CW signal here. The exact same thing. But nowadays this is done in single sideband mode and most single sideband transceivers or transmitters have a uh, passband of about 3 kilohertz wide. So if you use, if the passband would be something like this and the reason that these high frequencies of 2125 and 2295 hertz audio are used is so that their second harmonics will not generate new carrier waves that can go out over the air they'll fall outside the range of this bandpass filter uh, this filter in terms of width can range anywhere from 2.4 to usually 2.4 to 2.7 kilohertz but it can be as wide as 3 kilohertz 3000 hertz for single sideband transmission so if you put a voice signal in here you're going to get upper sideband SSB voice modulation but now this is the way that it's done today this is the way that radio teletype is commonly transmitted today using a single sideband transmitter but it was not always like that and back in the uh, olden days meaning the 1970s I had a Drake T4X transmitter And that Drake T4X transmitter had a VFO with a little terminal on it. 
and you could connect an, a capacitor into that terminal and actually shift the frequency of the VFO. You could go into CW mode and hold the key down or connect the key down and transmit a pure carrier wave. And of course the, the VFO would determine the frequency of that carrier wave. This is the old way and that is the way that I designed my radio teletype transmitter and it was a real it was a real hoot it was a real kludge job I had a Western Union model 103 teleprinter machine that had been through a fire and survived the thing must have weighed 300 pounds it was so heavy that even with casters underneath its feet it put uh, dents, permanent dents in the tile floor of the basement fallout shelter which we had at our house in Rochester, Minnesota. I was in the 1970s a teenager and besides ham radio my other main avocation was competitive swimming with the hopes of becoming a an Olympic swimmer which I never even came close to. But there was no suppressed carrier frequency there was no single sideband here at all. So all of this stuff is irrelevant. Now this uh, horizontal line here represents the frequency spectrum from lower to higher. All I did was I, I would tune the, I believe the capacitance introduced lowered the frequency, but I'm not sure um, of the VFO. So I would tune the VFO to 14.072295 megahertz, for example, and close the key in CW. And place I, I could tune it in spot mode so it wouldn't go out over the air. And then I introduced capacitance intermittently using a circuit that I uh, built myself in conjunction with a terminal unit they called it a TU called the HAL that was HAL devices back then HAL communications actually named after the HAL in the movie uh, 2001 a space odyssey it was a HAL ST5 terminal unit and some associated circuitry that switched in a capacitance intermittently and when the capacitance was switched in the VFO frequency was lowered by 170 Hertz so it was if I tuned it to say 14.072295 and held the key down or or put a short circuit across the key and then switched in the capacitor just the right amount it, I had a variable capacitor that I adjusted to get just the right shift I would end up with 2125 when that capacitance was switched in and that was my circuitry that I devised in conjunction with this HAL ST5 terminal unit um, which was solid state it, it did not employ vacuum tubes the Drake T4X was pretty much all vacuum tube radio back then. This was in CW mode. It had nothing to do with audio frequency uh, being applied to the input of the transmitter. There were no audio frequencies. This was true frequency shift keying. CW at this frequency and then CW at this frequency. And the way that I determined that my shift was 170 Hertz was to actually listen to the output of my signal in spot mode and compare it with real radio teletype signals off the air by ear it was uh, I guess they I had what they called perfect pitch I could tell when my frequency shift was the same as that of a real live signal on the air. I could tell just by listening and I adjusted the variable capacitance. It was a real 
variable capacitor like the kind that you see you know with the meshed plates that you turn and a and a rotor and a stator um, just the old kind from the olden days of radio a variable capacitor and I would adjust that until the difference was 170 Hertz according to the tones that I heard when I received the signal which were audio tones 2125 and 2295 and I listened to those but I could tune them in at lower frequencies so I could get a a more accurate perfect pitch rendition and then I would tune them in to the proper uh, I would tune the, the receiver to the proper frequency to get these 2125 and 2220 2295 I believe this was the mark signal the lower frequency and this was the space uh, part of the signal they called this mark and they called this space I believe the higher frequency in audio was space but the audio that I got out of this was not audio being put into any transmitter anywhere this audio was coming out of the receiver just the same as the CW tone that you hear when you tune any shortwave receiver with a beat frequency oscillator. <laughs> Remember that term? BFO, beat frequency oscillator? Well, modern receivers have BFOs too. You just don't call them that anymore. Uh, I don't know exactly what you call them now, but they're the very same thing. The, they beat together to get these audio frequencies of 2125 and 2295, which then goes into a computer program which performs the exact same function as did my HAL ST5 in receive mode. And voila! You get the necessary printout on your computer screen. The Western Union Model 103, or the 102, I think was more common, but the Western Union 103 had sprocket feed paper. You know, those papers, um, those long lengths of fan folded paper that had sprocket uh, feed paper. Uh, attachments that you could tear off and when you ripped the pieces of paper apart by at the folds and tore the perf off you got eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper well I just read the continuous copy and it actually was a printer kerchunk 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 and it had a ribbon and ink that had to be replaced oh this was a relic but this was back in the 1970s I guess a Pretty close to 40 years ago now it would be uh, that I did this uh, and uh, but I was not in any way involving audio tones in the transmitted signal these were pure honest to goodness carrier waves the audio tones came out of the receiver as they do whenever you listen to CW or radio teletype on a communications receiver with a beat frequency oscillator. So I hope I make uh, I, I hope I make it clear. I I hope I make it clear. Okay, and uh, maybe that way uh, my young colleague will understand better, and and some of you younger hams will understand a little bit of how it was done. But this signal that came out of this transmitter was precisely the same as what comes out of a transmitter using AFSK the new way today not rather like not even very similar but identical Stan Jibalisco W1GV saying 73 which means best regards in radio teletype even single sideband voice, AM, FM, and particularly CW, in which I always say so long, 
as da 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 da.